What's up everybody, Johnny over at Witchcraft Whips. Uh, now, I was asked to make a follow-up video in the Basic Knots for Whips series, talking a bit about uh, other knot-related stuff, such as the knot shapes, uh, knot foundations, strand width, the strand length, and a bunch of topics. Sadly, my head-mounted camera died in my arms, quite literally, just a few moments ago, so we're gonna make you with a regular handheld. But I'm sure things will be fine. Uh, before we get going on the uh, knot stuff, I just wanted to say that uh, most, if not all, what I'm about to say in this video is personal preference. So if I say that something's not good, that means I don't find it very good. And if I say this is how you should do it, that means this is a way that you can do it. So I just want to make that clear right from the get-go. Also, I don't know how long this video is gonna be, and I'm gonna cover a bunch of topics. So if you're just interested in the foundation part, or just the strand width part, you can check the video description and I'll enter the time for each uh, segment, if you will. But I thought we were gonna start to talk a bit about the knot shapes. So here we have some basic knot shapes that I thought we were gonna cover. Uh, these are all shapes that I like to use, except for this one, but we're gonna cover that later on. Uh, I honestly don't know if any of these shapes have a particular name, I don't think they really do. But the first one uh, is my, well, basically all-around favorite. This is sort of a rectangular knot, but with rounded corners to make it a lot more comfortable. And also, to me, very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, we got a sort of a round knot, a very spheric and globe shape. Uh, we got the oval knot, and we got a sort of triangular cone shape-ish knot, uh, seen on the indie whips, for example. But like I said, this is my all-round favorite. Uh, this is the knot shape that I normally tie a 5x4 3-pass knot around. Uh, the knot that we tied in the first video on the basic knots for whips. Uh, I use this one on the uh, bigger boys, so to say. When you got a handle diameter that's around uh, 22 mils in that area. Uh, I found that uh, using this shape on a slimmer diameter handle is not as comfortable. So with my full size bull whips, for example, with a handle diameter that ranges from around, well, everything between uh, 21.5 to 23 mils, this is most likely the knot that I will use. Then we have the more of a globe shape or a very round knot. Uh, those knots I basically only use for snake whips. And why do I only use that one for snake whips? Well, uh, when used on a bull whip with a rigid handle, when grabbing this knot, I find that I feel less in control. Uh, my guess is that when I close my hand around the knot and the first portion of the handle, uh, my hand is only in contact with this portion of the knot and then a bit of the handle. So there's a big area right here that my hand doesn't touch. And when holding a bullwhip, I want a real, you know, good, solid grip on the whole thing uh, so that I feel in control of it. But for whatever reason, uh, it works very well for the snake whips. And it might be just the fact that the snake whip doesn't have a rigid handle. 
and in those instances just grabbing the knot feels quite fine. So for me, the very round knot only on snake whips. Now moving on to the more oval knot, uh, this is my go-to knot for the slimmer profile whips, uh, such as uh, the Aussie style whips for example. And uh, this whip right here is going to get an oval shape. The oval knot I particularly like for the slimmer diameter handles because I find that the oval shape really fills the hand, uh, unlike the globe knot, and makes me feel really in control when holding the whip. So this portion of the knot right here really follows, you know, the palm of the hand and for me provides a good solid grip on the knot and the end of the handle. Then we have this sort of indie style knot shape. Uh, this one is actually a very hard one. Um, I use this one on um, snake whips, just like this one, um, because I find that it works really well for snake whips. It uh, works quite well on bull whips as well, but much like the round knot, this one has a tendency for me to make me feel a bit less in control. My guess is that the same thing is happening as with the round knot, that um, the palm of my hand is just touching the outer portion right here. And then there's a gap where I'm not touching the knot or the whip, and then I'm holding the end of the handle. If this is a big knot, like it would be on an indie whip, it's very comfortable. But if it's too small, it gives me the same kind of problems as the round shape. But on snake whips, it works regardless of the size. Strange knot, that one. Uh, then we have the E knot. Uh, this is not a knot shape that I use personally, but I just wanted to bring it up because I see it quite often, especially on paracord whips. This is a very square-ish knot. It might be sort of rectangular as well, but uh, quite sharp and straight edges. Yeah, I think this knot would look a lot more better if one would just round off the corners a bit, like on this one right here. Round off the corners a bit more and maybe, and just round the edges a bit instead of have them completely straight. So just to recap, on the big boys, this is my absolute favorite. On the slimmer handle models, I like the oval one. But I do use these as well, primarily for snake whips. And one more thing I wanted to cover when it comes to the shape of the actual knot. I think, once again, personal preference. But the top portion of the knot should be slightly rounded. When having a completely flat top, I think that also looks a bit unnatural and strange. But if you like the flat top, that's completely fine. Don't listen to me on that one. Just continue doing whatever you feel is right. That's the important thing. Now, how do we go about making the bloody thing? Uh, right here, we have a whip that's ready for the knot. The braiding is secured by staples and a bit of artificial sinew and the end is trimmed off flat. Now, like I said, I like the knots to have sort of a rounded top, and that's normally the first thing that I do. Now on the bigger bull whips, when I'm tying the A shape that I showed you previously, this one right here, what I tend to do is just get my blade and shape the knot like this until I reach a desired rounded top shape. Uh, on the other whips, when I want a rounded top, I use uh, this. 
I honestly don't know what this is called. Maybe a wood button. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it has a sort of a rounded top and a flat bottom. Uh, these I get at my uh, local hobby and craft store. And you should be able to find something similar. Uh, and what I do is I just put a bit of glue on this one and then just press it to the end of the whip, like so. Let's see if we can get that in profile as well. Like that. And it provides a rounded top. Of course, this will be covered very soon, in fact. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put some glue on this one, stick it right there, and just leave it to dry for a couple of minutes. So the glue is now uh, almost completely dry. The butt cap is stuck on there, giving it a... I should get, get on camera when I'm talking about this. Um, the butt cap is on there and it has sort of an oval shape right now. I don't know how well that shows up on the camera, but we need to cover this now. Uh, and what I do is that I take a piece of scrap kangaroo and I just trace the uh, outline on of the butt cap. Onto the scrap part like so. Uh, it shows. Ah, you can probably see that, but there's a circle on there right now. And then I just give it a couple of guidelines for the cut. Essentially what I'm making is just a leather cross. Does that show up? Regardless if it does show or not, you'll understand in just a second. And there we are. We got our leather X that we're gonna place right here and staple down. And when we do that, we're gonna stretch it quite firmly so that the leather molds to the shape of the wooden button. Uh, these pieces that I cut off will be used for finger guards when pairing later on, on the next whip maybe. So don't waste leather. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna split down these legs right here slightly and then we are gonna attach it to the whip. There we are. I have now stapled the leather over the top, down on each of the four sides. So that's held in place quite nicely. And uh, I made sure to stretch it quite hard as I stapled it on there to make it a nice flush fit against the wooden cap that's underneath. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of sheet lead that I'm gonna wrap around the knot to help balance the whip. For this particular whip, I think that one wrap of lead is gonna be just about perfect to have it be nice and comfortable. Now, if you don't need to weight your heel knot, uh, you can just wrap a strip of leather around there. Uh, what we're trying to achieve essentially is building a base shape and then we're gonna wrap that with artificial sinew to uh, mold the final shape. So I'm gonna staple this one in place. And there we are, the lead is uh, on there right now. I threw a couple of staples in there to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, now, I did forget to mention that uh, in this particular case, uh, the width of the lead is one inch. Uh, how wide this uh, strip needs to be depends on how, well, essentially long you want your knot to be. What I'm gonna do next is that I'm gonna cut the ends of the 
leather wrap that's sticking out underneath and I'm just gonna cut that about I don't know one or two mils past the lead down here and uh, then I'm gonna wrap this whole thing with artificial sinew to shape the knot essentially and like I said if you don't lead the weight the uh, heel knot you can just wrap a couple of strips of leather around there to build your basic shape but we'll check back in when uh, I have wrapped the whole thing with sinew. And there we are. We have uh, wrapped the uh, knot foundation with artificial sinew and created the shape of our knot. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the size of the heel knot uh, well, it needs to fit the hand and be comfortable, that's the most important thing. But it's also nice if the size can match the whip, so that the uh, knot is not too big and looks misplaced. Now one other thing to keep in mind is that the leather that you're gonna tie around this knot foundation is going to add to the diameter of the knot. So you need to make the knot foundation slightly smaller than you intend the finish knot to be. And the next thing to do right now is we are going to cut our strand for the knot. And that leads us on to the next two subjects. How wide should I cut my strand? Now to determine the size or the width of your strand, what you need to do is first of all know what knot you are gonna tie. There is quite a handy formula uh, that Bernie shows in one of his videos and uh, I'll include that formula down in the video description along with a small um, tutorial on how to use it that I wrote uh, about a year ago, I believe. Uh, I use that formula for pineapple knots. For all the other knots, I basically just eyeball the thing. And uh, how do you go about eyeballing the thing? Well, actually it's kind of straightforward. I just look at the knot determine roughly, you know, I'm gonna need, let's say I'm gonna tie a six byte seven part two pass knot like we did in the second video. Then I'll just check right here and appreciate how much, how wide the strands need to be. For this knot, I would say, around 5.5 mils. Uh, how do you learn that? Well, essentially just experience. But one other thing that might help in the size of the strand department is beveling your strands. Let's see, I'm gonna do a bit of drawing. We are now gonna use a fresh piece of paper. Hang on, I'm coming. Thank you. There we are. Let's see. That's our strand. We bevel that corner and that corner. And here's the strand next to it. Bevel the same way. Now let's see if I can have this make sense. Uh, when beveling the opposing corners, uh, the strands can lay next to each other like this and cover the heel knot foundation very well and be very smooth. But they can also, let's see here, they can also slide up 
each other like this and still be very smooth and that creates a bit of a wiggle room to help with the strand width. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. They can lay next to each other and cover the knot and be very smooth and nice and they can also slide up each other on the beveled part and still be very smooth and comfortable. And the next question to ask yourself is how long should the strand be or needs to be? And here I just uh, test wrap. Uh, if I'm tying a, uh, well, let's say I'm tying a six by seven part two pass knot. That means I'm going to go around the knot six times to create the base knot and then six more times to make it a two pass knot. So what I essentially do is this is a fall, but excuse me, I just test wrap like this one wrap. Two wraps, etc., until I got 12 wraps. And that is the length that I need for my strand. Normally, I add about six inches to that, and then you stretch it, so that's gonna add a bit more just to be on the safe side. So I think that's basically it. No, it's not. I forgot the transition knot. Haha! Yeah. Well, for, for the transition knot, uh, once again, personal preference, etc., etc., I think that the transition knot needs to be smaller in size than the heel knot from an aesthetic perspective. Uh, once again, I see a lot of makers that make these huge transition knots sometimes bigger than the heel knot and to my eye again personal preference that doesn't look quite as pleasing as it can uh, i have two ways of uh, making my transition knot foundation one way is to just wrap a bit of artificial sinew on there and create a bit of a bump right there for the not to be tied and gripped around. The other way which I'm using most of the times is taking a piece of kangaroo uh, because that's nice and thin and I normally have a bit of scraps. And what I like to do is to wrap the roux around once and have the flesh side of the hide being the outer part and the grain side being the bottom, because the flesh side is a bit more rough. It's still very smooth, of course, but it's a bit rougher. And I find that tying a knot around that ha makes the knot grip it a bit more. And uh, this piece of rue is uh, 20 mils wide, and I am gonna skive the edges of it. And what I do is I just place it along the side of my cutting board and I place my knife along the edge at an angle and just work that along the edge. Same thing on the other side, place it along the edge, hope you can see what I'm doing. Like so.
and then I'll just wrap that around the handle. Well, the transition knot is not going to go here, but you'll get the idea. Like this, and staple that in place. And that'll be the foundation for the transition knot. I believe that's everything. Well, if I forgot something, please excuse me and do let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer your questions if any should arise. If there are no questions asked, I'll just take that as a job well done on my part. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Now I need to finish this whip and uh, ship it. This one's going to Germany. Very nice.